peace. Facebook. Nice Sunday, but it's not nothing like the weekly Sabbath. My name is Brother Cephas, my reader today, Brother Cam. Uh, here to deliver to you this word of God. We live on Facebook and later we'll be going on on YouTube. Today's title of the class is called The End of the World and the Rapture. Now, I'm going to put the disclaimer right now that there is no rapture. According to the Bible, because that's what we're going to use to identify what's really going to take place in the end of times. So if we go according to the Bible, there is no rapture. The Bible gives us clear instructions on how the end of the world is supposed to play out. Jesus told you in Matthew chapter 24, which is what we're going to address, he's telling you a sequence of events. You know, you're going to have false prophets. You're going to have people coming in his name and actually call themselves the Messiah, which we've had, you know, events of. He talks about the rumors of the world. And the reason why we have to address this is because, you know, recently... People have been talking about a rapture taking place on April 23rd. Not everybody believes it, but I've seen people, you know, concern themselves enough to even post it on Facebook. Now, if you are thrown to and fro by any form of doctrine, really it's showing that the preachers of today are failing to do their job. Now... That's the purpose of these pastors, to let you know, hey, the end of the world is near. We are living in the end of days, and we're going to see that. However, Jesus gave you clear-cut instructions on what has to take up place before his coming. Now, we're going to go on to Matthew chapter 24, which is our opening scripture. We're going to pick it up at verse 3. Because Jesus and... Because Jesus, you know, God, he's, he's really setting it up with this great tribulation. That's what this end of times is going to climax at, the great tribulation. This is going to be the ultimate t test of your faith. Whether you're going to be on the Lord's side or you're going to be serving Satan. And we're going to read that. you got to pick a side. But these pastors are not preparing you for it. And as we look at the world today... They, for the most part, already are on one accord with Satan. So, we're picking up Matthew chapter 24. We're going to pick it up at, at verse 3. And when you get there, you can go ahead and read, please, brother. And he said, Upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And that's a valid question. You know, you don't want to be shocked. You don't want to be, you know, blind to what's taking place before you, especially when you're, you're waiting for the kingdom of God and you're having that faith. And Jesus, he's going to let them know exactly what's going to happen. Keep going. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And that's the very first warning Jesus gives us. Take heed that no man deceives you. So if someone has the ability to deceive you and he's warning you that people will deceive you, then we need to take it upon ourselves to be educated, brothers and sisters. Meaning we can't just believe any form of doctrine that comes our way. How do we prove it? According to the Bible. If there is a pastor, a preacher, or a blog, or whatever, trying to tell you something about the Bible, they bet, like, just like when you write a paper... And your teacher tells you you need to cite your sources. Guess what? They need to line up what they say with what is said in the Bible. So you need to take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right, go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And he said, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. You know, people, are, you know, at the edge of their seats, hearing about Russia and China, you know, Russia and the United States, you know, United States attacking Syria. You know, we're, 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 we're scared. We don't know what's going to happen next. 
But Jesus is letting you know. He says, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Listen, when you understand the plan of God and how things are supposed to pan out, hey, there, it comes with peace. Because you don't have to freak out about every new instance that's taking place. Go ahead. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The end of sorrow. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You said rise. You know, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, says, it says that you have, for a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. But guess what, brothers and sisters? This is the beginning of sorrows. So when we see all this taking place on the media, and we're freaking out, guess what? Jesus is saying, man, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hey, this is the beginning of sorrows, brothers and sisters. That's why you need to build up your faith right now. And how do you do that? You get into this word of God. You know, Psalm chapter 1, it says, you meditate in the law day and night. And you got to let the Lord build your faith up. Because, like I said, these preachers are not, not preparing you for what's to come. You know, we're witnessing these rumors of wars, and they're going to keep going on. Because that's really what, you know, revolves around the end of times. You got all these, you know, big powers in the world. The United States, Russia, China, all these people. Guess what? They got nuclear weapons, all forms of militaristic weapons. That's going to bring devastation if they let anything off. And if you just, you know, you got all these people with power. You, you piss them off, guess what? It's just going to lead into the uh, war all over the place. So, but that's the beginning of, that's the beginning of sorrows. Keep going. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, he is taking it on a, on a large scale, and then bringing it to a, to an individual scale now. People, you know, like me, brother Cam, people who are faithful to the word of God right here. It says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. Ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Just because you endure this sound doctrine that Jesus gives you, the uncut word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you will be hated. And we're going to get more into that. Keep going. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Right. And many false prophets shall rise. And shall deceive many. So we saw, you know, many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And guess what? And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. He told you right off the rip, take heed that no man deceive you. There's dishonesty in the air, brothers and sisters, and no one is giving you the truth. These false prophets, they exist. They got the mega churches. It says they deceive many. So you don't see no, I mean, you do have your regular corner-to-corner -corner small Sunday churches. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, but they are deceiving because they don't have the true word of God. But on a mega scale, you have these pastors who are, you know, they got what they call mega churches. What, 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 what is the purpose of calling yourself a mega church? Who wants that? Why do you want that status? You're getting your own glorification in that. And guess what? They're, they're. And we're going to read that they're, you know, bringing in damnable heresies. Because they're not giving you the uncut word of God. Instead, they're telling you what you want to hear to attract you to come in every single Sunday. Guess what? The law is done away with. You're saved by grace. Well, you better not forget to pay your tithe now. That's what these mega churches be doing. That's what this deception is, you know, bringing forth. Of picking and choosing in the word of God. So, oh, but keep going. Verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we saw that, you know, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Ye shall be hated for all nations, of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Guess what? Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 
But what is iniquity, brothers and sisters? Iniquity is sin. And sin, according to the Bible, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For transgression is, oh, for sin is a transgression of the law. Biblically speaking, when you break this law, you are committing a sin. And it's an issue because no one wants to keep the Sabbath day. I get that. You know, I, I don't get it, really. It's an issue because it's, it's the day that the Lord set apart. But at the same time, when you throw away that, the first four commandments, guess what? The other six are thrown away with the brothers and sisters. You know, the same law that told you to keep the Sabbath day is the same law that told you love your neighbor as thyself. And it's broken down as don't steal, don't kill, don't bear false witness, don't covet, honor your mother and your father. That is in the law. So when you say the law is done away with and you can do whatever you want and you'll still be saved. Guess what, brothers and sisters? No one is pushing the moral standard. Now we can do whatever we want. And Jesus, is, Jesus loves me no matter what. But guess what? Because sin, or because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we're going to see an example of that. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Because we are living in these end of times, brothers and sisters. We're just seeing it, you know, play out bit by bit. But this earth cannot go on much longer. We're hitting that point of no return very soon. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we'll, we'll pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, you can go ahead and read, please. Like I said. We're going to see how... The people as individuals play a role in the end of times as well as the false pastors. But like I said, when you get there, you can go ahead and read, please. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What kind of times will come? Perilous times. Perilous times will come in the last days. The same thing Jesus was saying, Paul is backing it up. And what's going to be taking place in these days? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Of their own selves. So, so much for loving thy neighbor as thyself. Listen, I'm going to just love myself and that's it. It's all about me. Go ahead. Covetous boasters. Mm -hmm. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy. Sounds like things that go against the law. You throw the law out the window, guess what? I'm going to just love myself. Yes, I will be covetous, lusting after things that don't belong to you. You know how much robbery takes place? Why? Because they see someone with a bunch of nice things. Hey, man, I want that too. I ain't got the money. Guess what? I got a gun, though. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It says, and they love themselves. They're boasters. So, you know, one, you got the person coveting. And then at the same time, you got the one who's so flashy, wants to show off everything they have. Look at these pastors. Like, I, I live in Atlanta now. You see people, you see pastors driving on their license plate. It says pastor. How how boastful can you get? You so you're supposed to be the meekest of your church. But instead, you want to glorify your own self. But it says covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. And Jesus said, if you if you dishonor your parents, guess what? You can, you, you deserve to die the death. You don't deserve to live. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Oh wow, that's big. It says without natural affection. What does that mean? Hey, you got a bunch of homo. You have a whole lot of homosexuality taking place today, brothers and sisters. Whole lot. People love men with men, women with women. It's unnatural. The Lord put Adam to sleep, took the rib out, and created. Eve, not Steve. But it says without natural affection. Go ahead. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, 
fierce despisers and those that are good of those that are good. It says despisers of those that are good. So like I said, like we read in Matthew, if you're trying to do the right thing, guess what? You're going to be hated for his name's sake. They're going to deliver you up and kill you. It says despisers of those that are good, truth breakers, false accusers. Like people will lie on your name in an instant nowadays. They don't care. Go ahead. <clears throat> Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Because you're so, you know, pent on yourself, you care about yourself so much, you can't, you don't have time to care about God. You know what I'm saying? You care about money so much, you don't have time for God. You need every single day out the week to work. And it's crazy because... I be talking to people about the word of God, and they don't work every day. Now I used to be a cook. I had a friend. We talk every now and then. He does not work every day. And what's worse is that we were getting paid hourly. It didn't matter what day we worked. We got paid the same rate each hour. So you're telling me you cannot take off that Saturday to please God? Instead, you want to love. You want to please yourself. You want. You want to deal in your own pleasures. Then love God. And that's really what decision you're making when you choose, listen, I'm going to break these commandments to do my own thing. That, at that point, God is no longer, Jesus is no longer your God. It's either yourself, it's either money, it's either, you know, the lust of the world, whatever. Keep going. <clears throat> Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such, turn away. So from all these kind of people, hey. You need a you need a you need to put a line in the sand and you better not cross it. You can't get mixed up with these people. You don't want to. You know, I'm no better than the next person next to me. I'm a sinner just like he is, but at the same time, I'm trying to uphold the law and keep the faith in Jesus. I'm trying my best. But for those who don't even try, guess what? From such turn away. Go ahead. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts? Hey, fornication is the new norm now, is it not? It's all over the place. All over the place. It's the new norm. What? You don't you don't you don't sleep with a lot of women? You're weird. Like I remember when I was growing up, cause I didn't I didn't really grow up, you know, with the mentality I had to sleep with every, as I wanted to sleep with so many women. But, you know, I had, a, I had a friend, she was lesbian, I told her, you know, I don't really try to sleep with all the women in the world. I, oh, I didn't say it in those words exactly, but along those lines, she said, but you're a guy, that's not normal. But in reality, that is normal, because you're supposed to have, one, you're supposed to have a wife. You're supposed to submit, you know, come into agreement with the woman. Not laying up with any woman left and right that comes your way. But it says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Like, there's nothing but fornication. It's the funk in the air. It's disgusting. Go ahead. <clears throat> Ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Ever learning. You got all these PhDs, all these, you know, Educated people, ever learning, and it even applies to the Bible. You got people who consider themselves biblical scholars who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You have all these people who go to school to, you know, get a degree in theology. And theo really is a root word for theory. It's not according to the Bible. But they're ever learning, but guess what? They believe a rapture is coming soon. But it's not. The rapture is nowhere in the Bible. We're going to prove that. So from here, we're going to turn over to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because just like the people are crazy nowadays, like there's no, there's no, there's no morality. There's no standard of morality. Because if you think about it, from a man-to-man -man basis, we cannot create a standard, brothers and sisters. Because to me, or to, to a certain individual, laying with little children, little boys and girls, that may be okay in his mind. But to me, that's a disgusting matter. 
So from a man-to-man -man basis, we cannot create a moral standard in brothers and sisters. We need something that is above us. And who is above us? God. He's created a standard for man to go by, but we've thrown it away. We don't teach it in the schools. They throw the Bible out the schools. They take the commandments out the courthouses. You have, you have, it's, it's issued a separation between church and state. They don't want anything to do with God, brothers and sisters. So when you take away that standard of morality, which is the law of God, guess what? You have nothing but chaos. And the preachers have a role in this too. They're to blame too. Not just the people, but the preachers too. So 2 Peter chapter 2, we'll pick it up. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. You get there? Yeah. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus. Chapter 2. There you go. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Didn't Jesus say that in Matthew chapter 24? That, that there was false preachers, guess what? You know, he had to deal with these religious leaders. And they're the reason why he got killed, brothers and sisters. Guess what? There's going to be false preachers in our time, too. Go ahead. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. These heresies will get you damned. These heresies have nothing to do with God. They're their own doctrine. And if you follow these doctrines, you're going to worship God in vain. Because you're being taught the commandments of men rather than the commandments of God. Go ahead. Even denying the Lord that, brought, that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And they're going to get the reward real soon, brothers and sisters. They're deceiving the masses now, but listen, it, it ain't going to last forever. They're getting their glory. They're getting the money. They're getting the nice cars, the big houses. They're going to get the, they got their own planes, which you don't need. They got it now, but listen, it says, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. It's going to be coming, and it's going to be some hurt. Go ahead. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By few shall follow them. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. Just a couple. Ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. It says many shall follow their pernicious ways. So you have false prophets who are bringing in damnable heresies. That's going to get you in trouble with the Lord. And it says many shall follow their pernicious ways. Pernicious is another word for destructive, brothers and sisters. And it says by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So you got... Generations and generations, centuries of these false doctrines being preached. Now when you have the minority of people, a, a, the, a, a small group of people preaching the real truth, the uncut, of word, uncut word of God from Genesis to Revelation, they're trying to give you this Bible and give you the truth. Listen, we can read that there is no rapture, which we're going to talk about, but there is a great tribulation we have to endure. We're going to read it. But when people come giving you that doctrine, guess what? Of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You don't want to hear that. These people don't want to hear it. No, they 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 got they they've been they've been fixated on oh we going to heaven one day as soon as we die or we get raptured right before the great tribulation. That's that's what they've been fed constantly all day, all their lives for decades. They don't want to hear anything else. They don't want to hear this. Sound doctrine, you know. Probably, it's like, I give you good doctrine, forsaking not my law. But keep going. And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you. They're making merchandise of you. You're getting pimped out in a Sunday service. I'm telling you that right now. If you're a Seventh Day Adventist, you are getting pimped out. If you are a Baptist, you are getting pimped out. If you're a Methodist, and uh, so forth. These denominations who pick and choose what they want to follow in the Bible, you are getting pimped out. They are making merchandise of you. How, you can, how can you believe the, mouth, the same mouth that tells you the law is done away with? How are you going to believe that mouth when it's the same mouth that tells you, hey, but I'm going to use something that is within the law to make it uh, mandatory that you give me money? How does that work? It doesn't. 
but you're falling for it. So they're making merchandise of you. Go ahead. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Like I said, brothers and sisters, the reward is going to be coming real soon. Go ahead. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, mm -hmm. and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Like, God is letting you know, guess what? Listen, if you're going to be doing wicked, and like these pastors are doing wicked, listen, just because you, you don't see people dying left and right because they're committing sin now, don't worry. Your reward is coming. Everybody's going to get their piece of the pie real soon. And it says, For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved on the judgment. Guess what? We've been, we've been reserved on the judgment too. You know, not like... Like we got, we're going to have a time to come before the Lord and answer for what we did in this body. And it says, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person. Think about it. You had an entire population on the world. And he killed everybody but eight people. Noah and his sons and their wives. He didn't care. Because evil was on their hearts continually. What do you think is going to go on now? The same thing, brothers and sisters. We read in First Tim in Second Timothy chapter three, and we're looking at these pastors who've been failing to do their job to feed the flock, to give them the law of God, to show them. Listen, we need to prepare ourselves for what's to come, because the world is going to operate as it wants to, no matter what. But we, as an individual, we can learn to separate ourselves from the world. And get this sound doctrine, this great understanding that God has set aside for those who diligently seek him. But instead, they are found to do their job. And because of that, there was nothing but chaos in this world. And it says, uh, a preacher of righteousness bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Listen, there's a reason why God brought this destruction and why we're going to be experiencing destruction too. In this time. Because it's the world of the ungodly. There's nothing good that can come out of us right now and the way we're going right now. Go ahead. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So you got another example of people who are living ungodly. Sodom and Gomorrah. What do you think was going on in there? homosexuality, bestiality, all kind of, you know, sexual immorality was taking place in that time. What do you think is happening today? I can't walk down the street without seeing a homosexual. And if that's what you want to do, I'm not, I'm not about it, but I got to work out my own salvation. I can't make you stop, but you got to answer to the Lord for that. And really, this world is turning right back to where it was to begin with. And the Lord's going to got to come back with some fire to put it into all of it. But he says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live on God. He's like, these are our examples, brothers and sisters. That's why you need to get into the book. Look at how these people who got destroyed. Why did they get destroyed? Because they lived ungodly. Why? Because they lived contrary to the law of God. And all the law of God is trying to do is show you how to live righteously. If you don't want to do that, guess what? The Lord's going to take you out. That's really what the Bible is saying. But these are our examples. Go ahead. And deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Now, be mindful of something. He took out the, the old world and guess what? Only saved eight people. He took out these cities and only saved Lot and his family. Like, we should really realize, like, the path to life is very narrow, brothers and sisters. And the majority of the world is on one accord with Satan. On that path to destruction, brothers and sisters. So we cannot follow the crowd. We need to separate ourselves. Go ahead. For the uh, And deliver just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. 
Right. For the righteous man dwelling among among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He couldn't stand it. All the sin and wickedness taking place around him, he couldn't listen. He couldn't deal. You know how white girls saying, "I can't even." That's how Lot felt. Verse nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And you know what? That's what's going to be happening on the large scale. All you people, everybody who wants to live wickedly, guess what? Live it up. Because you ain't got much more time, brothers and sisters. The real saints, we got to stay strong. We got to endure. We got to have this faith. Because that's what this end of the world is going to bring out. It's going to let you, it's going to show to God, I mean, he already knows. But it's going to let us know, are we really about this walk? Are we really walk and walk as we talk to talk? Because all emotionalism aside, like, there has to be a, a firm foundation in you in this word of God. It's not lip service when it comes to God. And it's going to and it's gonna be shown when you, as we get further into the class and we realize we've got to make the choice whether we're going to serve God or not. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to go more in depth about this end of the world. And this, 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 the, and how things pan out. Matthew 24. And we can pick it up at verse 12. Get that, go ahead and read please. And because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. And we and we were just reading about that, brothers and sisters. There's no law. There's no standard of morality. There's no love. And because of that, the hearts of many shall wax cold. Go ahead. <clears throat> but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end. Meaning, you cannot give up halfway. Meaning, you can't just say, God just loves me no matter what I do. That don't work. It's not going to slide with God. You have to endure to the end. And that don't mean you just, you know, live until the Lord gets here. No, he means you got to stick with this doctrine. You got to stick faithful to God. No matter what persecution comes your way. And still endure to the end. Not giving up. And then you will be saved. Not, you know, I was saved March 28th of 1986. You know, when I went to that altar call. That don't, that don't work. It's, that's, that's bogus, brothers and sisters. You've been deceived. Because you have to endure to the end. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And this gospel... Of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Not for everybody to hop on the bandwagon. No, it's just for a witness. Because you know what? Not everybody's going to want this word of God. No, everybody's going to be interested in what you have to say. But, hey, it's a witness against them. So when you come before the Lord and you say, Lord, you know, hey, I didn't really know. He's like, hey, man, I know all your works. Because you're going to be judged according to your works now. That's Revelation chapter 20. You can read it all throughout the Bible. You'll be judged according to your works, brothers and sisters. So when you go before the Lord, it's, this is this, he's going to use this against you. Because you were told about this kingdom. And then in Matthew chapter 5, he tells you. He tells you. If you break any of the least of the commandments and teach others to do so, you'll be least in the kingdom. But then he flipped it on the other side and said, if you... You know, do these commandments and teach them. You'll be greatest in the kingdom. Meaning, if you don't take heed, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. If you do take heed, you'll get in. So, this gospel has to get preached. And you you made your decision once you denied the gospel, brothers and sisters. Once you denied it, now this is a witness against you. Rather than for you. Verse 15. When ye therefore... Shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Matthew the prophet. By Daniel the prophet. Mark, Luke, John, no, Daniel the prophet, brothers and sisters. So he says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by who? 
Daniel the prophet. Where is Daniel the prophet, brothers and sisters? The Old Testament. So we're, we are going to get into some Old Testament reading now. Not yet, but we are. Because you need to. This is how you go line upon line, line upon line. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how you do it. By going from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And from the New Testament to the Old Testament. Because you need both of them to get a pure understanding on this book. But it says, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So when you read this verse right here. And, you, and, you, and it says, Who, what, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So when you read that right there, he's, oh word, that's gonna be taking place right now. Hey, let me go to like you. When you read that, you should have some understanding on it, or you should be getting some understanding on it. And how do you get the understanding on it? You gotta go to Daniel the prophet. Jesus is referring you to the Old Testament to get some clarity on something written in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Yes, he is. Why? Because the law is not done away with. Contrary to popular belief, we still need the Old Testament because it's very valid today. But jump down to verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No. Nor ever shall be. So once this great tribulation kicks off, guess what? Then shall great then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. This is going to be a terrible time. No time can match what we're going to be experiencing that's going to be taking place soon, brothers and sisters. Not the Great Depression. Not slavery. I'm sorry to say, brothers and sisters. You know, not the Holocaust. None of these, you know, detrimental times that we consider to be the worst times in history. They do not compare to this time, brothers and sisters. It's going to be terrible. And I'm going to put this disclaimer out there. Of course, there's a way to, you know, get out of this great tribulation. You know, if you're a real saint of Christ and you go according to this book and you get the understanding needed, there is the wilderness... This is going to be a place of safety for Jesus' saints. But that's a lesson within itself. I don't, I'm not going to get into that. That's a class within itself. But for those who are trapped in this great tribulation, listen, it's going to be the worst time ever. There's no pre-tribulation rapture, nor is there an after-tribulation rapture. You are going to have to endure it if you get stuck in it, brothers and sisters. And it's going to be the worst time ever. Keep going. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So it's going to be such a bad time that in order to spare us or to get us still here living, God is going to be like, you know, I'm going to have to cut this time down. You got a pen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to cut this time down. He's going to have to shorten the days. If not, hey, we're going to kill ourselves, brothers and sisters. That's what mankind is on the brink of doing. You got the most proud people in office. Trump got no sense. Putin got no sense. I'm sorry to say. But they, they clash with one, another, with one another with nuclear weapons. What do you think they're designed to do? To wipe out countries. To wipe out large land masses. To kill people. And that's a that that's that's a crazy look right there. But let's let's <clears throat> let's keep going. Let's jump down to uh Actually, we're we're gonna come back to Matthew chapter twenty four. Let's go go ahead and turn over to Second Thessalonians. Cause now we have a new person in the plane now. The abomination of desolation. We saw how in the in the end of times there's going to be nothing but chaos because the people don't have any order. And then on top of that, the preachers, they don't have any order either. Instead, they're taking advantage of the regular everyday person. Got you invested in them and they're not preparing you for the time to come. And then on top of that, now, 
the Great Tribulation is going to kick off. That's going to be the climax of everything. But what kicks off the Great Tribulation? The abomination of desolation who stands in the holy place. And what is the holy place, brothers and sisters? Jerusalem. Because that's the city of the great king. That's that's Jesus' city right there, brothers and sisters. So there's abomination, desolation. He's going to be high-minded of himself to, to think, you know what? I'm going to stand in Jesus' crib. Basically, so Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, and we'll pick it about verse one. We get there. You can go ahead and read, please. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about the coming of the Lord. Go ahead. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. Is that the day of Christ is at hand. It says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You, you know what? Don't be shaken in mind. And there's no need to be shaken in mind. You know what's going on. You know how things have to play out. So when someone tells you on April 23rd that there's going to be a rapture because the planets are coming into alignment, you know, the rapture's not in the Bible. So, hey. Kick that out. That's not true. All right, boom, moving on. Oh, you know, Russia and, and America is having beef? Okay, moving on. This stuff has to come to pass. This is the beginning of sorrows, brothers and sisters. You know, listen, what we got to worry about is this abomination and desolation. But it says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as at the day of Christ is at hand. And what is the first thing we got to be mindful of? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Wow. So just like Jesus told you, take heed that no man deceive you, that was the first thing out of his mouth. Guess what? Paul says, let no man deceive you by any means. Like I said, brothers and sisters, there's deception everywhere. We have to be mindful of that. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. So the day of the Lord is not going to come, except there come a falling away first. And we are experiencing that right now. The, the, even if there's more numbers increasing in the Christian population, guess what? False doctrine is running rapid, brothers and sisters. So even if you claim to be a Christian, you are not a Christian. You're not. You're fooling yourself and you're being deceived because the, the real church is not Catholicism. The real church is not non-denominational. The real church is not Baptist or Methodist or Seventh-day Adventist. The real church, brothers and sisters, is a church that began in the wilderness, according to Acts. Paul, or the Bible is telling you the real church is Israel. They're the, they're the bridegroom. They're the church of God. And guess what? It is a nationality. It is a group of people. But there's also spiritual Israel who come along. And, but guess what? They got to go along the same laws, statutes, and commandments that the, the, that the physical Israelites got to. But it says, except there be a falling away first, which we are experienced, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. So we got to experience the falling away and that man of sin. Now, no one's perfect except Jesus. You know, I've sinned in my past. He's probably sin. I'm, I'm not I'm not pointing no fingers. But guess what? You got to be pretty wicked for the Bible to call you the man of sin. Man. Because we all sin. But this man is the man of sin. He got to be revealed. Another name for him is the son of of perdition. He's out to kill. He's out to destroy, brothers and sisters. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he is going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God. Guess what? Listen, you believe in Allah? <laughs> Yeah, you're giving that up, bro. You believe in Buddha? Yeah, 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 that ain't lasting much longer, bro. Why? I'm God now. You know that one of me? He'd be like, 
I'm the captain now. That's how this dude is going to be. He's going to exalt himself above all that is called God. So much so, he's going to try to oppose the Most High, our Lord Jesus Christ. So much, he says so that he sitteth, he as God sitteth in the temple of God. We just read that in Matthew 24. He's going to move into the holy place, the temple of God. He's going to move into Jerusalem, who where he got no business being. That's what he's going to do and show himself that he is God. He's going to magnify his office. This is who we need to watch out for. Now let's turn over to Daniel chapter 7. And see it, see it because we saw Matthew 24. It says, whoso readeth, let him understand. So we need to be you know, mindful of what's going on in the Old Testament. Talking about this abomination of desolation. Daniel chapter 7. We can pick it up at verse 19. And in Daniel, Belshazzar, he had a vision. You know, and his his father for him, Nebuchadnezzar, they had a vision. And it was giving you the rundown of the final four kingdoms in the Gentile rule. Because once you get some understanding of the Bible, you'll realize that God gave Noah's three sons each the opportunity to rule on the earth. First it was Ham. The Hamites had the opportunity. Then he, 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 Israelites came over and they ran. They, they didn't run much for long at all because they kept being disobedient to God. And then right afterwards was the Gentiles rule. Japheth. And you got the Babylonian Empire trickling down to the Medes and the Persians. Trickling down to the Grecians. Now, this is all biblical prophecy. We can read it before it even took place in history. That's how unique this Bible is. God said, I declare the end from the beginning. Who are you going to compare him to? That's why this Bible is true, brothers and sisters. And how we see the men operate and these pastors operate and this chaos taking place. The Bible told you about it too, brothers and sisters. So, what we're going to learn about is this last beast, this last kingdom. Because each kingdom was likened into a beast. And he, we're going to read about it. Daniel chapter 7. I didn't get there myself. And uh, verse 19. Let me get there. Go ahead and read, please. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. Now, when you look at the other beasts, the first one was a lion. The second was a bear. The third one was a leopard. This is, this is, Daniel's, this is Daniel seeing this now. But the fourth one was so... Unique and so dreadful and terrible, he couldn't even liken it to any animal. He couldn't. That's the crazy thing. He couldn't compare it to any animal. But he says, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. Go ahead. Exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Now this this beast is coming with some force now. Like you don't you don't take anyone who is exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. Anybody with that description, you watch out for that person. You do not take him lightly. Verse twenty. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. It says, now it's, 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 you know, it's describing his beast, and it says, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, be I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. With the sinners. With the saints. And? And prevailed against them. So, we being the saints... People looking for a rapture to take place, but we're reading that David it said, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints. How does he make war with the people who got raptured off into heaven? The answer is they didn't get raptured off into heaven. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They're still on this earth, brothers and sisters. And it says, and prevailed against them. So for you standing up for God, guess what? You are given the short end of the stick. 
This battle is not good for you. And if you think you're going to win, you're not going to be winning the first time around. We got to win unto the Lord. That's what I was going to read in verse 22. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Right, so for the most part, we are not winning this battle. But when the Lord gets here, listen, he's going to put everything into place. Now, people want to assume they get raptured on to heaven. The Lord, but we're reading right here, and we're going to get more scripture on it. But we came back to the earth to possess the kingdom. Correct? Right. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, right. and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Now this kingdom is going to be so diverse. Why? Because you got to think about these previous kingdoms. They're coming to you with military. They're going to force you with, you know, they're going to, like I said, with the military. However, this fourth beast, so diverse, death, uh, dreadful and terrible, guess what? He's going to get you spiritually, brothers and sisters. And we're going to put a name on this beast, too. I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it to the end. Because you need to know. The Lord didn't just put this out there for us to guess. No, he reveals it to us. And we got to use our understanding to, you know, figure out who it is. But it says... Is diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, not just part of it, the whole earth, brothers and sisters, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. We saw that it, was, you know, it made war with the saints. Jump down to verse twenty-five. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. We just read that in Second Thessalonians, that wicked one, that son of perdition, that man of sin. The abomination of desolation, brothers and sisters. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. It said, you know, in verse 20, it said, he, he said, that spake very great things, whose lip was more stout than his fellows. Go ahead. And shall wear out the saints. <laughs> We're reading this a second time. You know when you got those pair of pants? Mm -hmm. When you've been wearing them, time after time after time, washing them, washing them, washing them, wearing them, wearing them, wearing them. And then that fabric start to thin out, and then it rip. And that's what's going to happen to the saints, brothers and sisters. We're going to get worn out of the Most High. Go ahead. Of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Go ahead. And they shall be given into the hands, until the, and until His hands, until a time, and times. And a dividing of time. So this dude, he's going to speak against the Most High. He's going to war against the saints. He's going to wear them out. He's going to think to change the times, right? Change the laws. This same dude is a reason why people go to church on Sunday rather than observing the seventh day Sabbath ordained by the Lord. And then, when you read the Bible, it tells you the evening is the beginning of the day. Guess what? He is going to tell you, hey, midnight's the beginning of the day. When, what's so, what's so special about midnight? It's still night. Nothing has changed, right? And then, he's going to take it even a step further. Guess what? You know, around spring, around April, when things are coming back to life, the Lord said that's the new year. But what is he going to do? Nah, January is the new year. Where it's dedicated to a false god to begin with. The the the, the Roman god Janus, yeah. You're observe, you're you're acknowledging another god. What he does is he takes you off the track of Christ. And he's got you worshiping Satan, ultimately because he gets his power from the dragon, which we're gonna read about. Go ahead. Oh oh, and also it says, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So one time is a year. Times is two years. And the dividing of time is half a year. Yeah. <laughs> I try to do about three. But that's three and a half years, brothers and sisters. So this great tribulation is going to last three and a half years. Not seven years. Because a lot of people will preach that the great tribulation is going to be seven years. Instead, it's going to be three and a half years. And for three and a half years... He is going to be putting a, a whooping on the saints and a whooping on the earth if you don't get to that place of safety. Now, 
that's another lesson within itself. So I'm not really trying to, you know, talk on it so much. That's 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 for another time. But let's uh, keep going though. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. Go ahead. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Above the whole heaven. No, under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven. What's going to happen to it? Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. It shall be given unto the people of the Most High. Where do we get rapture? Where do we go? We're all going up into heaven. It says the saints of the Most High, we're going to be receiving the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. That's going to be in our possession, brothers and sisters, if we endure unto the end. Because if it says, whoso shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We're going to possess this kingdom. And that's like, like I said in Matthew chapter 5. The meek shall inherit the earth. That is a literal statement. We pray that every time when we do the Lord's Prayer. That our Father which are in heaven, that kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So this is what we're looking to get. The earth, brothers and sisters, is not to go be ratchet off into heaven. And it's not to go live up in heaven. We got no business there. Our business is to be done on the earth. Go ahead. And the kingdom and dominion, we had 27? Yeah, yeah. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Temporary kingdom. An everlasting kingdom. Everlasting kingdom, brothers and sisters. So there's no time for us to be going up in heaven. I'm just trying to stress that so we understand what's going on. This great tribulation is going to kick off and we have to endure and then we possess the earth. That's what Jesus, that's what God has laid out for his saints to do. For the end of the world to, you know, pan out. Not for us to get raptured off, brothers and sisters. Finish that up, please. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. And we're talking about the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let's turn over to Daniel chapter 8. One chapter, we'll pick it up at verse 23. When you get there, you can go ahead and read. 23. Mm -hmm. And in the latter time of their kingdom, which the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance. and Weak, under, weak countenance. A fierce countenance. Fierce countenance. And what else? And understanding dark sentences shall stand up. We were just reading about this dude in chapter 7. It's the same person. The abomination of desolation. But he's going to have a fear count, fierce countenance. And understand dark sentences. We'll get, we'll get more into that. And shall stand up. And what is he going to do? Shall stand up and his power shall be mighty. But not by his own power. It ain't going to be his own power. Who is he getting fueled by? He's the car, right? And he's going to the gas station. That gas station is Satan, brothers and sisters. That's how he's going to understand these dark sentences now. Standing, he says, understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, mm -hmm. but not by his own power. And he shall, go ahead, go ahead. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Man, why do we keep hearing the saints? Why do we keep hearing the holy people? Because no this, <laughs> right, no, right. We, we read all that, but we ain't read no rapture. Why? Because the Lord is letting you know, hey, you got to be ready for this. You got to be. But these pastors are not preparing you. Like I got one view right now look like on Facebook. You're still not being prepared right now. And it's sad. The majority think they're going to be okay. But the world is getting worse and it's not getting any better. And then when it comes to where you have to make the decision, who are you going to stand for? You're not going to be ready. You're going to fold like an omelet, brothers and sisters. You ain't going to stand a chance. It says, he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice. He's going to be doing some witchcraft now. Think about it. His power is from Satan. He's going to be performing miracles, which we're going to read. 
And it says, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Listen, you no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you're going to get it. Verse 25. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Right. Because he's going to magnify himself, thinking he, he thinking himself his God. He's standing in the temple of God. And then when the Lord get back, he's going to smack up inside his head. Let him know, hey, you thought you was running it, but you're not. Because then our God is going to get here and take the world over. But for the time being, he's going to be a, putting a hurt a hurting on the earth. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 13. Like, we don't got to be worried about what Trump's going to do in America. We ain't got to be worried about martial law or about the new world order, chemtrails. Who you got to be worried about is this abomination desolation. And we're going to put a title on this person. Revelation chapter 13. We'll pick it up at verse... Let me get there and see where I want to start. Revelation 13. And, uh... We'll pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? We said, and we saw how the dragon, where ultimately when you worship this man, who's going to make you have to make a decision on who you're going to worship? You're either going to worship him or you're going to die. There's no in between. But who is he getting his power from? The dragon. You read in chapter 12, it says that, you know, and that great dragon was cast out of heaven, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So when we talk about dragon, we're talking about Satan, brothers and sisters. And he's going to be fueling the fire in this man right here. But it says, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Go ahead. Verse 5. Yeah. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. We just read in Daniel where he talked about a time, times, and dividing of times. Guess what? Forty two months is. That's one year, another two years, and then half of a year, brothers and sisters. Where like the Bible isn't creating one scenario and then making another scenario. No. It's talking about the same situation. That's how you go line upon line to get the full story. One part elaborates on it, then you go in another part of the Bible to elaborate on the same subject. We're not creating a seven-year great tribulation. Instead, we're getting two sides of the coin on the same three-and-a-half-year great tribulation. That's all that's taking place right here, brothers and sisters. And it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. And blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue for forty and two months. Go ahead. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Man, this dude really don't. He really got a chip on his shoulder towards God. He got an issue with God to where he got to manifest himself against the most high God. And you know what's gonna happen when he come when Jesus come back? Angels gonna say. King of kings and Lord of lords. Why? Because this dude is a man thinking he can magnify himself against the creator. Listen, he's going to be put back in his place. But it says, And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And it was given unto him to make war against the saints and to overcome them. Man, so we just don't get a break, do we? Everywhere we read... He's going to be putting a hurting on the saints. Disclaimer, if you don't make it into the wilderness, which is another lesson. So, it says, and it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. So, he's going to be winning this battle when it comes to, you know, him versus just the saints. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Wow. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Mm. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So if you are not found in the book of life, you are going to be worshiping this beast. 
And if you worship, if you worship this beast, and your life, your name is not found in the book of life. Guess what? You are going to end up in the lake of fire. Once you decide to make that choice to give in to that beast, mm -hmm. hey, the Lord said, "All right, that's cool. Yeah. You made your choice. Worship is just to serve, right? Because you're serving Satan now." And you made your decision. You let God know, hey, yeah, I was talking all that talk. You know what I'm saying? I was marching up and down the, the, the aisle saying I love you. But when it came down to it, listen, it was all talk. It was all talk. And these pastors, they, hey, they got to get an even worse reward. Because they were supposed to prepare you for this time. Instead, they kept giving you deceit. They kept giving you damnable heresies, doctrines that are not found in the Bible, brothers and sisters. How are, they gonna, how are you going to listen to a pastor who tells you that you can eat anything? Like, all you got to, all things are good and not to be refused, you know, with Thanksgiving. All you got to do is pray over it. When, guess what? Me and him, we human beings. We are creatures. So, so you, so you telling me now all creatures are good to be eaten, so I can go and eat, eat a human being? That's sick. And then we read in Proverbs chapter twenty-eight and verse nine. He says, "When you turn your way, you turn your ear from hearing the law. Guess what? Your your prayer shall be an abomination unto God. So there's no way around it, brothers and sisters. You got to go line upon line to prove what you're being told." Now, they have their own fault, and you got your own fault, because we all going to be held accountable for our own actions. But it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's deep, brothers and sisters. Jump down to verse uh, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Uh -huh. And he exercised of all power of the first beast before him, and caused of the earth and them which dwelleth therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Right. And he do and he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. What's he gonna do? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Then, then Jesus said, you know, take heed that no man deceive you. And then Paul said the same thing, let no man deceive you. And then Peter told you that. And then, you know, just like those false preachers in our time, guess what? In their time, in our times, we're going to have false preachers too. False prophets. People here to deceive you, brothers and sisters. And it says, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles. Go ahead. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Go ahead. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if you don't want to worship the beast, you die. There's no gray area, brothers and sisters. At this point, this is the ultimate test of your faith. You have to pick a side. This is what is going to be taking place in the end of the world, brothers and sisters. Not a premature rapture. Not, you know, uh, <laughs> not lilies and like running through the meadows. Everything's okay. The Lord is just going to come back one day. We'll be okay. No, we're going to have to endure some headaches. Some real headaches. Some real hard times. Because we're experiencing the rumors of wars and things to that effect right now. But guess what? That's just the beginning of sorrows. It's going to get worse. But, uh, verse 16. And he caused a fall, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So this is going to be the sign that he's going to put out to show, hey, you worship me. This is this is your pledge of allegiance to Satan right here. It says, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So anybody, everybody's going to, there is no one safe. If you don't get into that wilderness, disclaimer again, this is going to be for another class. If you don't get into that wilderness, listen, 
you are going to be SOL thinking that, oh, I don't need to take the mark. No, you're going to take it. Why is that? Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save that had the mark or the name of the beast of the number of his name. So if you don't have this mark, you ain't going to be able to eat. You ain't going to be able to buy anything or sell. So how are you going to feel? Think about it. How are you going to feel when you when you at home, you see your kids starving to death? And you're so starving. This is going to be a terrible time, brothers and sisters. You can't buy or sell. You can't operate without this mark to be in this this one world, be in this one world religion under Satan and living in the world at this time. This is this is the time for us to build up our faith, brothers and sisters. But instead, we lollygagging around, acting like everything's okay. Listen, we need to build our faith. Because you're going to have to make that decision. No, I'm not going to take that mark. Because I can take the mark and then I'll be able to provide for my family. But guess what? I am damned at that point. I am condemned. There's nothing to look forward to but the lake of fire. Because that is your pledgeance to Satan. That's your, that's your pledge of allegiance to, Satan's, to Satan once you take that mark. But then it says that if you don't take the mark, you will be killed. Are you ready to die for the word of God? Like that's a real serious thing. To die for the word of God. But what is that number though? Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Six 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 is his number brother and sisters. And now I'm going to point out. This little diagram for you guys. I hope y'all can see it. And I'm going to post it on Facebook later in the day so y'all can see it as well. But this is the number of the beast. Because you can identify who this beast is. And that's a, that's a, you can use scripture to that. But I'm not really trying to get into it. Because, you know, my classes only have regularly 10 to 12 scriptures. But in the Catholic Church, the Pope. His title is Vicarious Philae Dei. And when you break it down, the literal meaning of vicarious means substituting for or in place of. Philae means son. And Dei means God. So when you put it together, it means the substituting or the replacement of the son of God. This guy wants to take the place of Christ, of Jesus. He's going to consider himself to be God and magnify himself against the true and living God. That's who this beast is. Now, when you look at Vicarious Philidae and you break it down in, the, in their own room, Roman numeral system. Now, the numbers have values. And I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it so, we, so you can see it for yourself. But in Vicarious you get a hundred and twelve value. The V is five. The the I is one. The C is one hundred. The I is another one. And the U V equals five. Well, the U equals five. So when you get that, that's a hundred and twelve. The fill I, the F has no value. The I has one value. The L has fifty. Then there's two more I's, so that's three. So that's 53 in that one. And then in day, D-E-I, -D the D has 500, the E has no value, the I has one value. So that's 501. So when you put together 112, you put and you add it to 53, then you add 501, what do you get? 666. That's in the title. When you, there is their own number system now that they put together. And then when you when you give the Pope, who has the highest authority, and you give him that title, Vicarious Philidae, and you add up the Roman numeral value to it, it adds up to six six six, brothers and sisters. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna post it so you can get a because I don't you won't really get a good representation right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post it so you can see it yourselves. But it says here is wisdom. Let him that that hath understanding count the number of the beasts 
For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. And that is the Pope who is going to magnify his office. And he's doing it low key right now. But you see how he came to America, and then all the, all the, you know, the president shut things down for him. Because these presidents, they bow knee to this guy. Like, he is a king himself. The Vatican, he's a king of that area. But that's the class within itself. So let's keep going. And we're going to end this by addressing the rapture doctrine. We're going to go to the scripture where they use to justify rapture. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we'll pick it up at verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. When you get there, please go ahead and read, please. And now when, when we start reading this, I want you guys to be mindful of something. Let's keep it in its proper perspective. Like, let's, let's be mindful of what's going on and what Paul is talking about when he addresses this topic. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them. Which are asleep. Now Paul is about to run you up on some game real quick. He says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. When you look in the Bible, to be asleep and to be dead goes interchangeable. When you die and you go to the grave, God is considering it that you are asleep. Go ahead. That ye saw not, even as others which have no hope. Now these people you got people out here who lack understanding on what it means to be dead, what's really going on. But he's going to run you up on some game. He's going to let you know what what's going to happen after this. Go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So just like Jesus died and resurrected himself, guess what? The saints who died in Christ, they're going to resurrect too. But that's going to happen at a point in time. It's not about dying and going to heaven once you die. That's not your home going, brothers and sisters. Instead, once you die, you wait. Oh, we'll get there. Go ahead. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So if... You died and went to heaven, or you died and went to like a fire. Why would why would the dead be rising if they're already alive, just in another state? No, when you're dead, you're dead. You ain't got no thoughts. You ain't got no memories. You just in the grave, waiting for the for the Lord to wake you up. And the uh, ones that are dead in Christ shall rise first. This is what we're gonna read is the first resurrection, and it says, "For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven." With a shout, with the voice of the ark, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead shall rise first. And what's going to happen? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Right. So if you stop there, oh, keep going. Okay. To meet the Lord in the air. Right. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And people read that and just assume, oh wow, once we die. You know, we're going to we're going to meet up with Jesus in the clouds mm -hmm. and we're going to go off to heaven. Mm -hmm. Did it read that there? Did we see we go off to heaven? No. All it said is that we met him in the clouds and we in to meet him. We went to the clouds to meet him in the air and it said we're going to be with him forever. That is a very true statement, brothers and sisters. We're going to meet him in the air and we're going to be with him forever from that point on. But does that say where we go next? No. At this point, we are still in the clouds or in the air. But it'll tell you what happens next in the Bible. But it says, then which we are alive. So, you know, if we, Lord willing, we did make it to the coming of the Lord. Hey, we're going to come up and meet him in the clouds just like the ones who are dead in Christ. 
That's why we don't need to be worrying. That's why we don't need to be sorrowful. Yeah, death is a hard thing to take, but it's not the end, it's not the end of the world to us because we know something better is to come. Hey, listen, his, 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 his time to labor is over now. Rest. Because you're going to resurrect soon. I'm, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again, my brother in Christ. Turn over to Zechariah chapter 14. This is our last scripture here. Zechariah chapter 14. When you get there, you can pick it up at verse 1. And get there, go ahead and read, please. Zechariah 14. Mm -hmm. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Wow. So the day of the Lord is at hand. This is what we're reading about. Just like we saw in First Thessalonians chapter 4, it said, When the Lord shall descend from heaven, hey, it says right here, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and that spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And that will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. And that's Armageddon, of course. Now, at this time, we're still experiencing, you know, the ends of the world taking place. And then, you know, the nations are going to be gathered together. That's, that's what it's going to boil down to. Nation against nation fighting together. The Lord is going to bring them all together so he can deal with the world. All together, he ain't gotta go to Russia, then go to China, then go to America. Now he's gonna he's gonna bring them all together. I'm gonna deal with y'all right now. If you read Isaiah chapter 66, he said, and he he's gonna gather a nation so he can plead with all flesh, with all flesh. He's gonna plead with everybody, and it ain't no begging going on. Why? Because that same it says, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Meaning, he ain't sitting there like, please, please worship me, please. Let go of my saints, please. Nah, he said, you don't want to worship me? You don't want to let my saints go? Die. That's how he's going to speak death unto these people, brothers and sisters. But, um, go ahead, verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which he before Jerusalem which is before Jerusalem on the east. Now, when you look at Acts chapter 1, I'm going to reference it real quick. When Jesus was talking to his disciples the last time before he ascended up to heaven, you know, when he ascended up to heaven, he ascended at Mount Olives. And the disciples were looking at him, and there's angels. And they said, you know, you men of Galilee, why, why, Mar why are you gazing at this? The same way he went up is the same way he came down. And then they said that they were leaving the Mount of Olives. That's Acts chapter 1. You can read it on your own time. But then in Zechariah chapter 14, it says, And his feet shall stand in that day. So you see him descending from heaven. And where does he land? In the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. So when he land on his Mount of Olives, he's coming with some fierce, with some with some power. When he come down, it's going to be such a, 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 a strong landing. That mountain is going to split. Whew. Some toward the north, some toward the uh, it says, some Yeah, some toward the north, some half of it toward the north, half of it toward the south. It's going to split when he land on it. But then what's going to happen? And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto us all. Yeah. You shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord, my God, shall come and all the saints with thee. And all the saints are going to be with the Lord. So you're telling me we met with him in the clouds? And then he came down on the mountain olives? And the saints was with him? With, was with him? We read in 1 Thessalonians, we're going to be with him. We're, we shall forever be with the Lord. But he didn't tell us where we were going to next. But Zechariah 14 lets us know as soon as we met him in the clouds, guess what? We came right back down to the soil, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, to the earth. We didn't go up to heaven. 
We didn't get raptured up nowhere. We ain't read that nowhere in the scriptures. We saw a great, terrible time called the Great Tribulation. And, you know, before we get there, we're going to have many false pastors, which we still have today. We're going to have, you know, people, you know, concerned about themselves rather than God. And because of that, there's no morality, there's no modesty, there's no humility. We're just proud, boasters, covetous, natural. We don't, we don't even go after natural affection anymore. It's so crazy that, you know, a woman wants to be with a woman who dresses like a man. Why don't you get you a man? It makes no sense, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Men of the, there's chaos amongst the people. There's deception amongst the pastors. Rumors of wars. This is the beginning of sorrows. And then the abomination of desolation kicks off the great tribulation. You have to pick a side. Are you going to worship the beast? Or are you going to die for the word of God? And guess what? If you don't die for the word of God, you're going to die in that lake of fire, an everlasting death. And then, once the Lord gets back to deal with the nations for the wickedness taking place on this earth, guess what? He's going to have his saints with him. The same saints he met in the cloud they're descending down with him, and he's going to war. He's going to bring the smack down on this earth, and then he's going to establish the kingdom of peace. But, you know, there's no rapture. You didn't read rapture not one time in this class, brothers and sisters. And I got I got this, um, I got this, uh, I typed up rapture on Google. I went on, you know, Britannica Encyclopedia. To look up a little bit. I'm not going to read all of it. Because I, I don't really feel like we need to. We live in an information age. Where we should be able to look up things our own selves. But I'll just read a little bit. Like what, I, what what's highlighted. What I circled. The rapture. Mm -hmm. The belief in the rapture. Emerged from the anticipation. That Jesus would return. To redeem all members of the church. Right. The term rapture however. Appears nowhere in the testament. Nowhere in the new testament. So much for being a new testament Christian. That believes in the rapture. Listen it's not even in your portion of the bible. And there's no such thing as a new testament Christian. You need to be a bible Christian. It's nowhere in the New Testament, nor is it anywhere in the Old Testament. Go ahead. Belief in the rapture is often connected with the belief in the literal coming of the millennium, the 1,000-year rule of Jesus Christ after his return, as mentioned in chapter 20 of the Revelation of John, also known as the book of Revelation. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't read it, but that's really telling you about how, you know, at, at, the, day of the, coming, at the day of the Lord, Basically, Satan's gonna be Satan's gonna be bound in a bottomless pit for a thousand years during his thousand year rule, and then those who you know didn't take that mark and were beheaded for the word of God, guess what? You're gonna reign with Christ for a thousand years. But we already saw. I mean, that's Revelation 20. That's some more homework for you. You can read. But we already saw in Daniel chapter seven that we're one to possess the kingdom. We're gonna possess the earth. Like, it's all over the Bible that we're going to possess the earth. Now, uh, yeah, I don't really want to read all this because, but the rapture is, uh, it was put together by a man named John Darby in the 1800s. And it's a man-made doctrine. Please stop following after man-made doctrines. It's like born again. <laughs> Being born again. I mean, you got to be born again, but not the way these people keep, preach it. Keep getting baptized. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one baptism, brothers and sisters. You need to do it in with understanding with the, of the uncut word of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it on that. Please get some understanding. In Jesus' name, peace. Peace, peace.